Good morning, everybody. It's day 66. This is going to be the last day of this adventure. Um, we're in Saskatoon, and today we bomb at home. I gotta say, it was a, it was really nice sleeping in here, up until it started getting cold right right around the mountains. After I left Kamloops, it was just it's just been not nice sleeping in here. So I'm a little bit excited to go to go home at this point. I, I was just gonna refill my water, but it's rock solid, frozen all the way. So nope. All right, it's now 8:22. We've been driving for like an hour and a half, or an hour 45 or so. But it's now bright enough that you can see me in the camera, so that's kind of cool. Um, it's like kind of foggy out, and I think it's actually like freezing rain right now. Actually, the top half of my windshield is like ice, like like textured ice. But it doesn't matter because I'm short and I can't see that high anyways. So the part that I look out of is nice and clear. See, look at that. Nothing. No trees. Just nothing. Uh, we're in Regina. Just filled up and uh, went to the bathroom. So I'm going to keep going. I'm not hungry yet, but I'm sure at some point in the next five to six hours, I'll get hungry and stop somewhere to eat. But I'm okay now, so I'm going to continue back on the road. We're in a construction zone. It's only 60, which is painfully slow when you've been going basically double that for hours. I don't know how long it goes on for. It's been a couple kilometers already. That's the way she goes. See, I'm confused. The construction all ended. The speed limit's now 80. But there's nothing here, like there's no cones, there's nothing. And the rest of the highway is 110, so I'm like, do I just guess when I'm supposed to speed back up or will there eventually be a sign? Say look, like what? This is construction zone? Just passed a sign, 536 kilometers to Winnipeg. And then we gotta drive around the perimeter because I'm on the other side. past the Manitoba border back home well we're still like three hours from home but we're home we are almost to Brandon Manitoba and uh, right before you get to Brandon there's this big valley and it's probably the steepest road you'll pass in Manitoba on the Trans Canada so it's the only really exciting thing I have like, to look forward to this highway's been pretty dead today. I haven't like passed a lot of people. It's like really uneventful drive. Here we go, here's the big one. The big buckaroo. Cool. Really cool. Yeah, that's the valley. That's it. We're past Brandon, um, on our way now. I think it's like 200 kilometers from Brandon to Winnipeg. I have about a third tank left, but the last third always seems to go the quickest. I'm gonna see how far I can go without running out of gas, so, yeah. Because I have a co-op membership, but it only works within the city. So I'm gonna see if I can get to the city, but I'm really not sure I'm gonna make it. If not, I'll stop at Portage La Prairie. Other decent sized town. Okay, so we're 100 kilometers from Portage La Prairie and we're 177 kilometers from Winnipeg. So, I don't know if we're gonna make it to be honest. See, look, Manitoba is better than Saskatchewan. We have trees on the Trans Canada. Fact! Manitoba is primarily forest, it's mostly boreal forest, and the prairies only exist in Manitoba in the southwestern region of the province. Um, then to the east we got uh, we got our Canadian Shield. It's gorgeous. We've got lakes and rocks and all sorts of cool stuff. And then in the north it's just tundra. It's like up near Churchill and that stuff. Yeah. I decided not to stop for food so I'm just like eating what I have left in the truck so it doesn't go bad. We got crackers so I'm eating crackers. 
the gas gauge needles officially touching quarter mark. And we're 50 kilometers to Port Diesel Prairie. So I think we're just gonna get gas there. Cause I don't feel like running out of gas on the highway. Definitely not gonna make it to Winnipeg. Um, but hey, we're uh, running into a fog patch. That's kind of exciting, I guess, kind of. I'm actually a little disappointed because I forgot that our highways are like not that good. It's like you go in BC, they got really nice roads. Alberta has pretty nice roads. Saskatchewan roads are okay. And then you get to Manitoba and you're, you literally have to dodge potholes. And then you get to Ontario and it's good again. So it's like, come on, Manitoba. All right, we're in Portage La Prairie. The fuel gauge, she's just about, just about to touch the eighth. Usually my fuel light pops on by now. So I'm gonna get gas. Okay, I'm in Headingley. Um, Headingley's like this town. It's like attached to the side of Winnipeg. Now we just hop on the perimeter, which is like the perimeter. It's a road. Perimeters, our city. And uh, yeah, go in there and get where we need to be. It's so sloppy. I don't think this city's ready for me. It ain't ready for me. It's a boss. Okay, we're almost home. But I think I might stop at the car wash, even though the roads are gonna be yucky, just to like wash up the tires that I have on the back so that I'm not putting them away dirty. I'm also really excited to see my dog, because I haven't seen my dog in two months. And it's not like I can call up my dog and be like, hey, hey dog, what's up? You know? Alright, clean the tires. Now it's time to actually go home. Wow. You know, it's funny, like, you turn down your street and it's almost like you never left. It just feels like any other day now. It's really weird. It's really weird. It shouldn't feel like any other day, but it does. Hey, you. Hi. Oh, my puppy. Hi. Now the process Hi. of unloading everything. All right. Settle back in at home. It's going to be the end of the... Carl on the Adventure Truck series, so I think I'm going to try to upload videos every once in a while, keep some cool adventures coming, but yeah, it's the grand finale, I guess. See you guys.